This is not just weird. This is pretty stupid how this works. I am going to turn this other computer on behind you. You can't see it. This computer is another one. Turn it on here. And I'm going to play some music. This computer. Windows 10. Oh. I don't know if I mentioned this, but a couple of weeks ago, um, the stock market, uh, the stock market, the internet went down, the stock market, the internet uh, went down at Delta Airlines, I believe, and um, three major U.S. companies, the internet completely died. Now, um, it's very odd that you know, the movie Terminator, they have an operating system, you know, that's got to come out and link all your stuff together, and it's Skynet and all this and that, and, you know, all major, you know, companies were taken over by Skynet after, you know, you know the story of Terminator. Well, Windows 10 has this great big launch coming out, and um, a few people who are in the Insider program, um, have copies of Windows 10 already. They've been giving it out for free and you've got it. So, I have a home network that can comprise of six computers throughout every room of the house. Uh, in my main computer is here in my office, which is the garage. You guys all know the full story. And studio. And the carport is enclosed, and it's the Broke Man Studio Bootleg Theater, where we watch the bootleg movies on the super giant wide screen. So, let me get back to uh, the story here. So, I am part of the Insider Program. Um, I have Windows 10 running on my main computer. My hard drive was dying, and then... <coughs> I was going to upgrade it anyway, so, you know, I got the two gigabyte hard drive. Got a two terabyte hard drive for a C drive now. And, uh, I don't like partitions. For some weird reason, I just don't like partitioning my hard drive. So, um, I put Windows 10 on it. Everything worked fine with the, the first uh, build. They call them build. Different versions build this, build that. The version that's out right now, it's a impressive professional, um, Windows 10 impressive professional, I think it's 10 T40 or something like that, but the one before this, um, the one that came out almost a week and a half ago, I think it's 10 130T or something. When I put that in my system, this was the same week everything, you know, was crumbling on the internet. Let's look all weird back here. So, um, it was outrageous. I put this in my system. Wrong ass password. And, um, you know, once it's in your system, you know, it works. So then I'm like, okay, it's fine. And as soon as I got on my network, the entire network crashed. Everything. Everything crashed. The router had to be reset. And it's not good. Now, I want to explain to you what I mean. When you have a 12 terabyte server, um, you tend to want to have it on the hard wire. You know what I mean? The landline, you put the LAN cable in. As soon 
as I hooked Windows 10 onto the hard line, it shut down every computer in my network. Listen to what I'm saying. Everything is messed up. Every single computer in my network went offline. Had to reset everything. To this day, when the next build popped up, because I was complaining about it, when the next build came up, it in installed. No, I had to install it separately because everything was screwed up. So I put the next build in the computer and it starts up on Wi Fi. It will not go lag. So why is this? So you know what I did? Plugged in the LAN cable, made sure it was all up. As soon as it popped up that it was on LAN, everything in the house went back out. I said to myself, somebody at Delta Airlines had a copy of Windows 10 on their computer. And they plugged into the LAN line. Somebody at the stock exchange had a copy of Windows 10 on their computer and they plugged it into the hard line. Somebody at the other major company had a copy of this Windows 10 on their computer and plugged it into the hard line. That's my theory. But that was three weeks ago when I wanted to tell you about this for my computer constantly tells me that I need to reinstall uh, Adobe. Adobe Player. Your Adobe is not up to, to snuff. I mean, you need the latest. I'm not trying to play a video when I look into the camera and speak to you. Let me start this one. I did this one for, you know, memory of Kenny the Snake Stabler. Because I met Ken Stabler at a golf tournament, you know, when I first got married. And, you know, it was a cool experience to meet all the, the football stars, you know, playing golf. Jim Brown was there, Roger Craig, uh, Ken Stabler, Otto, hundreds of Raiders, hundreds of Niners. This was the thing. <laughs> like the stereotype that nobody knew he was going to go blow up a recruiting office and go shoot up a base. Now, they say it's on the news. I would like to turn it on here. It's just, I still don't want to talk. I got one remote, two giant monitors. I mean, when I, when I tell people sometime about the way this is set up, I talk about, like, yeah, man, I got Two forty-five inch monitors, Dell Precision seventy-two hundred T and T seventy-two hundred. You know, two two gig video cards, uh, twelve uh, gigs of RAM, twelve terabytes. Tell people this, they're like, "Yeah, right, bro." 
Yeah, you probably pushed an Android tablet, bro. Yeah, hamburger. Yeah, man. I understand you're on welfare, yo. Living in your mom's garage, yo, dude. Yo, yeah. N-word, bro. Is your wife a bitch? I know, ho. Stereotype, yo. You ain't got nothing, Negro. But, it's not like that. I actually really got a lot of cool shit. Because, I worked hard when I worked, and I paid for shit. See, when you're a minority, all you want is what you say. What people tell you you can't have. Oh, wow, man, you can't have this. You can't have that. And the first thing minorities do is go get what they not supposed to have. You're not supposed to have Mercedes. You're not supposed to do this. You're not supposed to be able to buy that. Because people hate like that. What better way for me to rub it in your fucking eyes that I can do shit you can't do by sticking in your face what I have that you don't have? Because you don't think I can have it. That's why I come out in this room. That's why this room always looks fucked up. It makes me, you know, put things in perspective. You know, when I first met my wife, she's like, why do you hoard food? Because when we grew up, we didn't have food. Duh. That's why I hoard food. Because we didn't have it. Why do I hoard electronics? Because I saw it here. It's obvious. We can fix everything broken. Nowadays, you can't fix anything because they don't want you to. So, um, let me get back to the Arab guy. He said, um, he did what he did because he wanted to atone for his sins. Well, you know, I don't have any alcohol in here, but I do have drugs in the room. I'm going to smoke drugs. I'm going to smoke some methamphetamine and some cocaine right here in front of everybody. And then I'm going to atone for my sins. Not a meth pipe or a cocaine. It's actually marijuana vaporizer. And I was going to vape and smoke vape out. And oh no, he's fucking marijuana and cocaine and methamphetamine. And he's going to go out and kill people to atone for his sins. You know what, man? They want to put everything on this dude. They want to make this dude look like a super jihadist and all that. Um. When it comes to the Bible and the Quran, the Uran, um, they don't tell people to just go out and kill people. They tell you to defend yourself, but they really don't tell you to go out and kill people. So, you know, that whole thing is against Islam and it's against Christianity. You know, the Christians, you know, they kill a lot of people. You either join them or die. You think Americans, you think these Indians were Christians when the motherfuckers came over here and, and stole their land and killed their people? No. You know nothing. They was that badass. How come they shouldn't enslave the Indians? You ever hear anything about Indians being enslaved? Do you? No, but um, just recently I heard of some Indian war. And they said the Indians used to come through and kill tens of thousands of Americans. And no one wants to hear that. Well, if you show up in the land where there's a whole bunch of people already, and you're trying to take over their whole entire world and they kill tens of thousands of you why are you in their shit why are you in their world complaining about them defending themselves against you you don't want China to come in here boat in San Francisco Harbor and Oakland Harbor and say you know um hey Shit or get off the pot. You owe China this much money. You owe China this. You owe China that. You know what? We own half of Oakland. 
we're on most of this. We're, we're just going to come and be on our property. It's the first thing Americans would do. Hell no. You don't come up in here. We're going to fight these Chinese people. That's the first thing. Oh, no, no. They can't come up in here. They own the land. How come they can't come up in here on some shit they own? Hmm? They own it. They bought it. Flat out paid for it. It wasn't like they rolled in, set up camp, and tried to take it. But, the Chinese come in here. Oh my God. Oh. American citizens don't have guns to defend themselves from the Chinese. Oh Lord. What are we going to do? And we won't want, we would want to fight. We would want to fight. You would be encouraged. You would tell people, you don't let Chinese take over your neighborhood. It would be for nothing. People can buy something, but they can't use it. So, when there was laws back in the days, when the slaves were free, you think about all these job openings. You got <coughs> you got like four million job openings and eight million people and four million of those people were the ones that did the job that are now going to be open can you imagine how those Indians felt not being able to get those jobs how oh, those white guys felt knowing they're going to have to compete with those slaves. Wow, America was at a turning point. But we're getting back to this other guy. This little Arab kid who was depressed because he grew up as American. Americans get stuck on alcohol, drugs, food, patriotism, electronic overload, the need to have more. He became an American, got hooked on everything. So you go back home, Use your mind. Get off drugs. Clean up a little bit. And somebody turn you into a terrorist? All you wanted to do was stop smoking weed. Drinking alcohol. Being addicted to games and electronic overload. He just wanted to... What the hell has this got to do with terrorism? I want to rehab. Rehab says, in order to atone for your sins, you must become a martyr in the war of jihad. What the fuck does that really mean? Why are why are powers that be creating a holy war? Think about it. When people talk about holy wars, they're like, that shit is overseas, man. And then we got, <laughs> they're killing the people in the churches. You know, the racial thing here, but they're turning the racial thing here into, it, they're killing Christians. Those are Christians in that church. They are killing Christians. They, that, that little white kid, he was, he, he had a confederate flag. He wasn't a Muslim, was he? But he goes to a church and kills Christians, just like the jihadi is. What, what's up with that? I think this kid was looking for the good old American pastime suicide by cop. That's what I think. 
I think he was going for the great old American. Look, he got a gun. Look, it's a person of color. Shoot first, prosecute later. That's what he was looking for. But then he shot up the little army thing, and they're like, damn, ain't nobody, no police showing up. The fuck? You go to the army base around the corner. Just fucking stupid. You see, everything that I see going on is advertised. They advertise for it on CNN. They advertise for it on almost every network. And almost every channel is advertised. Before there was a methamphetamine uh, problem in America, I was watching something, and then they were showing Dog the Bounty Hunter in, uh, in Hawaii. And they were talking about ice. And I think I was on a cruise, and we were leaving, um, we left Florida, and I was watching news from New York, and they were talking about this ice. This was maybe 1991, 91, 92. Ice. One hit and you're high for 12 hours. It's an epidemic. Fuck this ice. Fast forward to 2000. Was it 2000? And then it's meth. Crystal methamphetamines is I think. Some slang language, cross language. And then they had the Molly, which were ecstasy. Why is it called Molly? Is it because of the virus? I mean, they got all these names for these designer drugs. And it's cool. And it's cute. They even had one time they had flavored cocaine. I think that lasted about a couple of weeks because the people who were snorting and shooting it was all fucked up. It was like, fuck. Strawberry fields, but not my veins. I don't, it's weird. It's, it's stupid. And now we have this super political correctness. But let's get back to the little jihad kid. So all his friends said he wasn't like this. Until he goes on this little trip to uh, one of the countries America loves so much. And um, then he comes back like this. You know, a guilt trip is fucked up. When you got family and friends and religion making you feel guilty about whatever you've done in life, you know... You were smoking weed and you lost your job at a nuclear power plant. You know what? It's good he lost his job at the fucking nuclear power plant. I'm sorry to tell you folks, but the best thing that could have ever happened to us in this country was this kid to lose his job at that nuclear power plant. So, let me get back to the kid. Just because somebody feels lonely or sad or left out, that doesn't mean they're going to want to go kill somebody. That doesn't mean everybody with a mental illness needs to die. You know, you could be driving down the street and get pulled over for not having your blinker on and die in this country. And literally get arrested and die in America. You can be sentenced to death for not putting on your blinker in America. So for people around the world who want to rush to come here, I suggest you watch our news on the internet from every local channel in every city you want to move to before you decide to take the American slave train because that's exactly what you'll get. You'll be lied to before arrival and then after arrival you will be placed into bondage, a bondage that your kids will be in forever. Similar to slavery, but your bondage will be to the companies that run the country and not to any political affiliation, but the networks that make up this nation. You will become their property. Your base worth is based on how much you can earn in our system in your lifetime. 
In other words, from the day you get here, how much money can you generate for this wheel? Let me get back to the kid from the sad. So, how do we know what set this person off to make them do what they did? I have some mental issues. I was fucked with as a kid. I got things I got to deal with in life. And everybody deals with issues. But I do not, one, want to see anybody die or be killed. I do not feel like I want to kill myself or I ever will kill myself. I will not allow anyone to kill me. So, I do these videos on the internet. And, you know, I do get political. And in that last video I did, you know, I told people, this is the worst emblem on the planet. Everybody fucking hates us. But I love us. This is me. Regardless of what I say, this is my country. I can badmouth me because I know what goes on around me. But you on the other side of this camera, you cannot badmouth me. I cannot badmouth you. I can only badmouth what I see. So when I made statements about China, it's because I didn't like the product that I bought from China. The fact that I bought something from China was broken. I was angry, so I said, F-bomb China. I didn't say F-bomb the people of China. F-bomb those companies that won't accept a return when they sent you some broken product. But instead, I was taken out of context. F-you, F-America, boo. F you, N word, bomb, N word, you, comma, colon, yo mama, bomb, N word, F you, N word, bomb, comma. But you know, that's what it is. I'm going to say some things about every single person white, black, Hispanic, Mexican. African, albinoid, citronoid, albinoid, Africanoid, humanoid, gray, reptilian, mass of energy, spiritual form, a ghost, specter, the devil, the Lord. Our creator. I say shit about everybody. Everything and everyone. So I'm bound to be a bad guy somewhere. But nobody deserves death. And the divide and conquer has gone so far that, you know, I would rather die for a million things. Religion is not one of them. How a person believes in God and what a person believes is not a reason for anybody to go kill somebody or die for some cause. Now, freedom. What is real freedom. Not one person in America can tell you what freedom is. Because for over 70 years, probably more, there's been a false sense of freedom. If you're free, you don't owe nobody nothing. How do I owe somebody taxes? If I'm free, how do I owe a debt placed upon me by a system if I'm free? How can you bury somebody and say they cannot be buried until their debts are paid? It's illogical. Um, I was 
watching one of these videos and the guy says the church has been bought out by the government and I'm like this guy's an insane nutbag but the church gets a tax free exemption if you don't have to pay any taxes then fine that's cool right but in return for a tax-free exemption, the church refrains from making certain speech. If you've got a Bible, the Bible is supposed to be the rule book of mankind, first of all, it's gutted. They're taking pages out of it. So the pages they're taking out, the minister, the reverend, the rabbi, the cleric, whoever, the um, uh, what's the guy with the curly, uh, the, the curly, the curly, the bagels and lock guys, they, they, there's certain teachings that they can't teach now if their church accepts the money. Now, do the Jews get to teach non-homosexuality? Because non-homosexuality is in the Bible. But that's not the point. Good and bad is in the Bible. And if you accept money, then you have soiled the Bible. So that does make sense that the guy says that the churches can't be trusted anymore because they've taken the federal exemption so they keep all the money. God and money. Okay, let's move on. Religion is not worth dying for. I'm going to give you reasons for dying. This is stupid. These are the number one reasons to die. Okay. Saving your family from a burning home. That's a good reason. Trying to save a family member from any incident. That's a good reason. There are two good reasons. You're saving a family member from an incident that's not oh no let, let, let me change that to run in the house to try to save your baby or your wife that, that's a good reason try to pull your wife out of a car that's a good reason try to pull your child out of a car try to stop your child from drowning that's a good reason try to stop your child from getting hit by a train that's a good reason to save your daughter from being a rape that's a good reason. Save your wife or your mother from being raped. That's a good reason. Your life or somebody else's life. That's a good reason to die when you're fighting for your own life. There is no other reason to die. Not for a country, not for a leader, not for a religion, not for a love. The only reason to die is the preservation of life. To lose your life, saving a loved one's life, preventing a loved one from dying, saving lives of people around you random act of, of sacrifice to never to prove a point you never go out to kill yourself to prove a point 
never go out, put yourself in position to die to prove a point. You can threaten and prove a point. There's no legitimate reason to die. Period. Not disease. Not even accident. There's no reason. There's no excuse for death. I mean,
40 minutes. Life is tough, but you got to make decisions for yourself. Don't let nobody's influence or whatever you see on TV tell you that's what you're supposed to be or who you're supposed to be. This is your life. You only have one. Life is too short. Respect it for what it is and don't give it away because it only belongs to you. And you have it. It's yours. They can't take it. They can't take it. But they can make you give it away. You've been tubed. That was a pretty cool beat. I got I gotta figure it out. I know it's true. I know it's you. I know you do. You know it too.